Hi, my name is Carrie Colas, and I am an artist in Great Falls, Montana. I'm married with two children who are my cheering squad slash assistants, and I live on the Sun River just outside of Great Falls. And I also own a Snap-on Tools franchise with my husband. This presentation is about the why, what, and how of what I do because it's complicated. I paint with acrylic and Chinese ink on watercolor paper with sumi brushes, and then I mount them to hardboard and varnish them. It's kind of been a lot of experimenting and playing, so this is what it's about. I have drawn and painted since I was five years old, pretty much any medium I could get my hands on. Uh, my specialty was horses, of course. I've always drawn horses and loved them. Uh, this is a painting that I did when I was 12 that still hangs in my grandma's house. Thanks, Grandma. Even though I had always drawn and painted, I still got lost somehow. I believed being an artist was unrealistic, so I decided to get an interior design degree. But it wasn't all for waste because that's where I found my love of Japanese and Chinese art. So fast forward 10 years after a lot of drama, heartache and failure, I was totally and completely lost. So I decided that I needed to figure out what, what I was gonna be and who I was. And what I decided is I wanted to be an artist, but I didn't know what to do exactly. So true to form, I started studying, specifically Chinese and Japanese brush painting. I wanted to figure out what it was that I loved so much about their paintings and why it was so mysterious. And if I could incorporate it into my art with my own style. I instantly felt a deep connection with the practices and philosophies of Chinese brush painting. Yin and yang, the use of negative space, the simplistic design, and the principle of dragon veins, the invisible interlocking relationships between subjects fascinated me. Since I was studying it, I started practicing it. This is the painting that started it all. I was painting a traditional koi when I had an accidental ink bleed, and I thought it was so cool, I started to make it happen. And this is the result. Chinese ink is truly one of my obsessions now. I love its warm grayscale, and what I love the most is the things it does on its own when it's wet. So my paintings are a push and pull. The ink does its own thing while I try to direct it where I want it to go. No two paintings ever turn out the same. I also started combining ink with acrylic washes layered for color intensity. This allowed me to pursue one of my other obsessions, light from sunrises and sunsets, while using the ink as kind of a bone structure in the paintings. Because of my history of painting traditionally when I was young and then learning Eastern techniques later on, my paintings are kind of a strong, strange combination of the two. Uh, they're kind of east and west, sometimes there's a focal point, sometimes there's not, a lot of negative space and realism, but an animated quality to them. I have also adopted the Chinese tradition of being strictly a studio painter. The philosophy is to go out and experience nature and the world, observe and absorb, and then you go back to the studio and paint it. So my paintings are more of a feeling than a representation, more of the spirit of the subject. So I figured out what I wanted to paint and, and then I started accruing paintings, but I had to finish them and frame them and I was broke. So I did some research and found mounting and varnishing watercolors. After some experimentation, I started wet mounting my paintings to hardboard and then varnishing them. Wet mounting is where you soak the finished painting with water until it's flexible, apply an acrylic gel medium to the back, and then apply it to hardboard with a rubber roller and let it dry face down. Then it gets three coats of varnish, which protects it from the sun and, el and the elements and then deepens the color also. I've gotten so good at mounting and varnishing that I did a commission last summer that was 65 inches long. I had to custom order the hardboard from Ampersand 
it was a big challenge and it was kind of scary but it turned out really great and I was really pleased and they were too so that's the really important part horses are my number one subject matter I have always loved them since I was a child they represent grace freedom strength and resilience to me and frankly they're just beautiful to look at a lot of people that don't even like horses love to look at horses <laughs> I also love painting landscapes. Most of my landscapes are of sunrises and sunsets just because I love the way light changes the colors of things to molten reds and glowing golds. And they also represent for me openings and closings. I love painting trees. And really what more can I say about trees? They're wise, mysterious, beautiful, and twisted. I could stare at them all day. This is the miscellaneous category, fish, butterflies, flowers. These are things I don't really paint regularly, but I love. Um, usually I'm attracted to something like the color or the movement, especially with the fish, the movement. Just, I could stare at it all day. Um, overall, they're usually things that seem ethereal or impermanent and have an otherness to them. So this is who I am and this is what I do. But this is really just the beginning. I'm not even close to reaching the limits of what ink can do, let alone what I can do. So, but I'm certainly enjoying myself along the way, and I can't wait to see where all this takes me. Thank you for watching this video.